Hey girls, this is a new little seminar podcast that I was going to do for you girls and uh, I thought after hearing what your last check-in was like, um, I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of find ways that's going to help you get into, uh, uh, or I guess, work with your nutrition and your consistency um, a lot better and improve on some, with some little tips than, and I thought that I would bring on uh, my beautiful wife who has been tracking for religiously for a long time now and probably I would say picked up a couple of tips from me at home um, under the watchful eye of me 24-7 and uh, she is now prepping for a contest this year in September, the same contest as me and um, I'm welcoming Trina to the show, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Welcome to my podcast room. (laughs) Welcome to our spare bedroom. (laughs) So, um, I, yeah, like I said, I think it'd be a good idea to bring you on and, you know, basically tell the girls or speak to the girls what type of tips that you have for them that can, they can hit to their, their macros, their nutrition, um, and also some training things as well. And it might resonate with some, hopefully, um, and it might just help with someone, even if it's just like one or two tips that someone can take away, like that's kind of the aim of this podcast now for them is this to kind of give them a little bit of value and give them some sort of tips to take away that they can really nail their macros. So uh, based on that, I want to know what what does your, at the moment, so like you've been in a bulk, right? So can mm-hmm. we can we just, let's actually, I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about over the last, you know, five, six months what you've been doing tracking. Uh, so I started prepping for um, my competition in February. Um, and that was, yeah, bulking as such. Um, and I was doing that until just recently, April. I've been now cutting for three weeks. Um, my carbs were probably the highest. My carbs were with 300 grams, which is, I look yeah. back now and I think that's a dream. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> All the girls right now probably be very envious of that. <laughs> um, I was living life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so now I'm, I'm cutting in my, I'm in my third week and... I guess I'm sort of feeling the the hunger just a little bit, um, but I'm sort of trying to do a few things to keep that under control. <laughs> yeah, like it's only been three weeks for you, but you're already starting to feel the pinch. Um, I know that the girls are going to know and I'm going to know as well what it's like to, to be on lower calories. Like I've been dieting for myself for, we're now reaching month five now of relig- religiously cutting so like I, I know what the girls are feeling like and you're going to feel like that too. And you have felt like that before the cut. You're like you've tracked before, you've dieted before. So, I mean, now with your with the way that your macros are set, can you tell me like what do your like, average day of mm-hmm. eating look like for you? Yeah. Um, so Monday to Friday, it's pretty much exactly the same. I have the same breakfast and lunch uh, on a weekend though it's a little bit different um but yeah so breakfast is breakfast is oats uh every day love oats um Amen. With, <laughs> with biscotti what else do i have in my oats? oh and i have um bran plus fiber because my fiber was really down so i have to always add that um lunch so I that have, that fiber though i'm yeah. so sorry to cut you off but that's something that we that i told you to put in Mm. because your coach wanted you to increase your fiber yeah your fiber was low yeah even though i ate lots of vegetables i still wasn't probably hitting it as much as now yeah yeah so Um, that's actually a really good little hack to get your fiber up is looking at that or is it all brand it's all brand isn't it yeah and i just add it on top of my oats and it's like a little bit crunchy so it's nice yep kellogg's all brand i think so yeah yeah okay (laughs) i'm pretty sure that's what it was kellogg's all brand uh, and then lunch is curry, which I've been having for like the last three months. <laughs> we, we've actually been having the same lunch. I just said this to the girls I was training with before. For 12, oh, coming up to 12 weeks now, we've had the exact same lunch of curry. And I don't know why, but we're not <laughs> sick of it yet. Like, I love it. I know, it's amazing. Um, so I yeah, have that <clears throat> every, so Monday to Friday. But our dinners are different. So every night they're different, but they're the same each week. So for example, Monday we have, we make, it, make our own schnitzel. Tuesday I have salmon. Ash has steak and chicken. Um, 
Wednesday, so tonight we had pasta. Uh, Thursday we have uh, Mexican. We um, burrito. What do we? What do we have? The wraps. Oh yeah, yeah. the nachos. Mount, nachos. Yeah, but we have mountain bread wraps. Yeah, mm. instead of nachos or the chips. And then on a Friday we make our own pizza. But um, yeah, I guess so. With my definitely with all my food, I weigh it raw. And then if I want to, especially yeah, everything, everything's raw. Um, with the lunches though, because we make a bulk curry, um, I so for every day I'll have like fifty grams of rice, for example. Well, now I do fifty grams of rice, but I'm I cook it all together. So for a week, two fifty. And then when I go to serve it out, I guess to be more accurate, you can weigh it in the pot and then put it into your each individual containers. In, or you can, I guess, use eye level as well while dishing it out. But that's sort of like, I guess, another little way to make sure you're exactly getting. Yeah, that's the a same good, definitely. It's a good, that's a good little, another little hack. Um, like once you've weighed, you've, you've measured your rice for the week, like your bulk rice. And then <clears throat> that that's the raw version. You then start to cook it, mm-hmm. and then you have that cooked, the cooked rice, and you put that on the scales, the whole, the whole uh, pot, yep. and then you weigh what that, what that would be, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. And then you would then go, okay, cool. So that's let's say for instance, five example, five hundred grams of cooked rice. Mm-hmm. I'm now going to put a hundred grams of cooked rice in five containers. Yeah, whatever it equals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but for, for, uh, for an example, what happened today is, um, so obviously we have pasta on a Wednesday night and I, I love bagels. So I had a bagel today and I hadn't put my pasta in yet for tonight, but it ended up being, um, because my macros, my carbs went down last week, um, and they're lower this week. So when I went to see how much pasta I could have tonight, I could only have 20 grams of pasta. So it ended up being like five pieces in total. <laughs> but uh, sacrifices we make for the foods that we love. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, cool. So the other thing that I want to know about is, so uh, like I, it is a trend, not just with the girls, but it's also like a lot of clients of mine is that the hardest macronutrient to reach is usually protein. Protein is probably the hardest one. So what are you doing to reach your protein each day? Like what do you have? Yeah. Um, so my protein each day is 150 grams. And I, act, I don't eat red meat. I only eat white meat. So like fish, uh, well, sorry, fish and white meat. So fish, chicken. Turkey. Turkey. I think they're pretty much the basics. Um, and so... My curries, for example, going back to the curries, um, my chicken there is 250 grams a day and I think that's where I bulk get my protein because it's just easy having it in like a curry. It's in, you know, in the paste and it's, mm. it's not like, I guess when you eat a, a piece of chicken breast that's 250 grams, it's a lot, but when you cut it up and it's sort of in a, in a one in a, pot in a meal, dish, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's easy to eat. Um, other than that, I've been having recently, pro, is it Yo Pro? Yep, 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 Yo Pro, yeah. The vanilla yogurt. And um, we, we also got a new protein, which I'm loving at the moment. And I don't actually really like protein, but I really like this one. Um, it's the Ghost Cinnamon Cereal Milk, mm, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah, they got really good flavors. Yeah. yeah, and I've been mixing that in with the yogurt as like a pre-workout. And that's really high in protein, so I really like that. As a snack. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so now I guess with um with your macros that you've been allocated and your coach gives you your macros, mm-hmm. wh- how how close are you actually getting each day to those macros? Um, I pretty much I guess because I'm competing, I try I pretty much get them on the dot. If not, it could be like two two or three grams under i never go over um i'm really conscious of that yeah i think i think it's just because i'm i've got a goal in mind and i just i make sure i hit it yeah yeah look i think as well with with the once you've been given or once you have set macros 
Um, the, the goal is to try and stay very close to those, you know, and it depends on how close they need to be depending on the individual and the, um, <clears throat> I guess, the goal and the magnitude at state. But we obviously want to stay as close as possible. So if we can look at a rough guide of maybe five grams away from protein, give or take, five grams away from uh, carbohydrates as well each way, and then we're looking at roughly about two grams of, of fat each way too. Um, because you've got to also think too is that the closer that we're reaching our macros, the more consistent that we're going to be with our caloric intake. And I guess as a coach too, we can start to see the data and the trends as why you're going to get the results. And if we're constantly eating under our calories, it makes it harder for the coach to be able to make any sort of adjustments. So the closer that we do get to our macros and we start getting the results and they start rolling, which is awesome, you'll start to see over time things will slow down as what the body does and then that's when we can make a little adjustment and maybe we could drop by five or ten grams of carbs and because we're being very consistent with our macros we can then make that adjustment and it can be effective but if we're constantly under or over eating our calories and we're not reaching our you know our weekly intake as well it's not going to be very effective so the, the closer that we hit our macros and then the better it is going to be for a long term and also to get better results. So, okay. Um, with training, I know, look, I know as well, it's, it's hard for me and I, I already know being at home with you, it's, it's hard for you. And I'm sure it's going to be really hard for a lot of the other girls as well is that the, the motivation to train can easily be dropped off and something that you really can't rely on motivation um so tell me what do you do because obviously there's going to be days that you don't want to train Mm -hmm. um but you've got to obviously get it in and complete your program so like what do you you know talk talk to me through that how are you getting that done um so i train five days now and i guess those times that we don't want to train or i don't want to train um majority of the time it's earlier in the week because I know that I can push I know that I have a few other days to get my training in during the week but at the same time if I do do that then I'm also sort of shooting myself in the foot and squeezing like five training days back to back when I could have you know two rest days in between um so I guess I sort of start thinking about that I'm thinking if I go now then I can have a rest tomorrow instead of squeezing them all in And, you know, and then also training on both days of the weekend when you don't really have to if you can do it early in the week. Um, As well, I think, I think because of, um, yeah, because I'm competing, it's, it's a, I I have to do it. It's also a, I make it a priority. So um, I plan my in my diary, (laughs) I plan my workouts out. So I have them written down on the days that I plan to do it. So I do that on like the week before, the weekend before. And I make sure they're all in at set times. So I know exactly when I'm going, when I'm going to do it, especially on a weekend as well. Like if I do push them out and then have to work, work on train both weekends, Saturday and Sunday, I make sure I do that early in the morning or in the morning. And then I plan everything else after that so that's my main priority that i have to do that's a non-negotiable i guess and then everything else you know follows yep yep uh the something that i kind of gave some of the girls uh with with how they're going and making themselves so i i got them to do a piece of paper on it right off a piece of paper and choose how many days that they're actually going to commit to and train for that the whole week Mm -hmm. have an empty box and then what they would do is give that to maybe like a partner or someone that they live with Mm -hmm. And then what they would do is, let's say, for instance, it was four days. Uh, for those four days, their partner is going to tick off the box once they completed the training day or whatever the, tra- whatever the goal was. And then they have that somewhere where it's visible for them to see. And then it becomes a, more of a priority for someone because there's well, while that they have me to answer to, they also have to answer to someone else now to make sure that they're getting their training in. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's been really, really effective with some of the girls. Um, Okay, so I guess this would be the last question and it's very relatable to every single female that is, uh, that is tracking. Um, it's that time of the month. So periods. Uh, <laughs> so periods. <laughs> the, P, the P word. Um, so I want to know, obviously 
you know, you, you get cravings and, you know, there's a spike in your hormones as well and you're, you're wanting the sweet stuff, right? Which is fine. That's cool. But we've still got to make sure that we're hitting our caloric intake. How, how do you manage that? How did you manage your cravings and what do you do around that? Um, I don't actually get cravings during my period. I get it the week before. Yeah. Um, but it's not really any specific food. It's just more I'm just hungry. Um, so I guess, I don't know, like I, I guess those are those times where I tell myself I'm like, you know, like it's, it's your period. <laughs> it's your period wanting the food. <laughs> it's not really you. Um, yeah, so I just, they're the times that I really have to be most strict on myself and say, no, like, it's just, it's, it's this reason. It's not, you're not really that, hu- you're not really hungry. It's just your body mm. is going through those motions. Um, and then I just, yeah, at the end of the day, I still have to think I've got a goal in mind. I need to do it. Mm. So I can't just, yeah, I'll get in trouble with my coach if, <laughs> if I do anyway. <laughs> I mean, as well, I think the little hack that you could do is if you were at home and you're starting to get those cravings, go and brush your teeth. I don't know if you know about that one, but like <laughs> if you've got that craving, go and brush your teeth and put a bit of mouthwash in. You're not going to, you know, you've got that really fresh taste. You're not going to want to have something once you've done that, mm. you know, so um, could be a little hack. So the other, the other option that you could also do is if you do have those sort of cravings, you know, and if it's not fitting into your daily macros, what you could do is you could have something. Now, look, I don't want you to make sure, make sure you're not taking this overboard and taking advantage of this. But if you could have something, let's say an example like a Fredo Frog, right? If you want a Fredo Frog, but it's actually you've calculated your macros for the day and it, you've already eaten your macros and you want that Fredo Frog because you've got the cravings, but it's not going to fit your calories. What you could do is you could have that, but you would need to enter that into my fitness power for tomorrow. So that would be the first thing that you enter in and then you need to factor it all the other foods around mm. that muffin, the, the Fredo frog. So then you're hitting your macros. So you're kind of, yeah, you are essentially, you're borrowing macros for that day, mm-hmm. but you're just putting it into my fitness pal on that one. So then you can make sure that it, it will fit. And that has proven with my clients to, to work well. That way they are staying consistent with their daily macros. Mm-hmm. So that's helped. Cool. Well, uh, thanks for, uh, that's really it for today. Um, is there anything else that you want to add? <laughs> no, you've got it all. That's all. That's sweet. We're sweet. I think so. Cool. Or maybe, maybe just um, with regards to sometimes I struggle with. Maybe I should. Should I just stop? What? <laughs> Go for it. Um, when I have sometimes I found myself that I have more fats than carbs left, and I think that's a really tricky situation. I think you've been in the same when it's sort of like, what do I do with all these fats and mm. carbs? Um, so I guess those times I either have to add lots of olive oil to my food or like, for example, I had to put so much cheese on my, on my pasta because that's all I had left. Um, or avocado or also butter, like those sort of like supplements can help with the, get the final of your macro for fats. Yeah. And what we've both found, I mean, when we've had just carbohydrates left we've had we've already eaten out a lot of the fruit and we've a lot of we've eaten a lot of vegetables in that day and we found ourselves both of us in a position where we're like wow shit we've only just got carbohydrates left mm. how the heck are we going to be able to fill this up i eat gummy bears yes <laughs> lots of gummy bears so we um we'll then look at trying like add little fillers and then that's something where we would have would have yeah some lollies or something like that those are the days <laughs> So, but that's a look, that's when you have the luxury of having a higher calorie intake. And, um, you know, a lot of the girls will know after with their diet breaks as well, that like the feeling of having those carbs, but they'll come back. There'll be another diet break, but, um, yeah, Mm. that's just something a little to know later on. Alrighty. Well, thanks for joining me on this special podcast tonight. And uh, I hope you girls all benefited a lot from this, uh, this episode. And yeah, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, then make sure you just shoot them in the Facebook message and uh, I'll be there to answer them for you. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for joining me, Train. Thank you. Okay, bye.